Today, I'm going to learn about the thylacine, or it's also called the Tasmanian tiger. You guys remember Vanessa from Braincraft, right? No. Tell these people about the animal that you just told me about, please. Right, so I've been fascinated by the Tasmanian wolf, also known as the Tasmanian tiger, the thylacine, because it's like a dog with a pouch. Dogs don't have pouches. Dogs with a pouch. Straight away, I know very little about the Tasmanian tiger other than that it's a Tasmanian tiger. It has a pouch? Like a kangaroo, like a marsupial? Amazing. Okay, wait, we gotta get to the bottom of this. Meet the thylacine, also known as a Tasmanian wolf or Tasmanian tiger, a medium-sized meat-eating mammal that as recently as the early 1900s lived on, you guessed it, Tasmania. the island of Tasmania. Unfortunately, local farmers liked their sheep more than the thylacine, and eventually they were hunted to extinction. The last known thylacine died at a Tasmanian zoo in 1936. I tell you one fact I do know, correct me if I'm slightly off, um, I think that they put the, um, the protection order on the thylacine, I think about 56 days before they went extinct and there was one left and it died freezing cold, locked out of its, out of its, uh, its, its pen. And then I think they just threw it in the, in the bin. Pretty sad ending to the thylacine. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. And while you're correcting me, like and subscribe. There's more interesting things like this. But that isn't what makes the thylacine so interesting. So if I was on the island of Tasmania and I walked up to one of, to one of these things, I would think it was a, a wolf a or a dog or something like that. It's actually a marsupial. Um, so are kangaroos and koala bears and wombats, possums, things like that. Uh, <laughs> please tell me. I never thought the Tasmanian tiger was a marsupial, like a kangaroo, koala, etc. The name Tasmanian tiger or Tasmanian wolf or Tasmanian dog, whatever you want to call it, it certainly doesn't give you that image of a marsupial, does it? Kangaroos and koala bears and wombats, possums, things like that. So this is more closely related to a kangaroo or a possum than it is <laughs> to the wolf that it looks like on, in its anatomy and its shape. And yes. Fossils and DNA tell us that mammals like wolves and mammals with pouches last shared a common ancestor about 160 million years ago. Another pair with a common ancestor that far back, a hummingbird and a velociraptor. <laughs> the thylacine is about as distantly related from a wolf or a fox as it can be and still be a mammal. But just wow. look at them. The posture, the long legs built for running, their skulls built for sniffing and with massive muscle attachments for biting. Sure, they have pouches and a few other important differences, but they look so similar to a wolf, way more similar than a hummingbird and velociraptor. So how is it that two animals this distantly related could come to share so many similarities? That's there amazing. are two um, biological explanations for similarity. Two animals can be similar because they shared a common, recent common ancestor. Wolves and coyotes, for example, are similar because they had a recent common ancestor. Humans and chimpanzees, it's not accidental that we look very similar because we had a relatively recent common ancestor. But there's another explanation for similarity, and that's called convergent evolution. Convergent evolution. It's where organisms independently evolve similarities, all thanks to natural selection. Um, I would say things like natural selection and evolution is it's slightly mis misinterpreted misinterpreted mis, mis anyway um, because it's not necessarily survival of the fittest that's not actually what it is it's more of survival of just about doing enough um, you know you don't have to have the best ability to fly, the best ability to hunt. You have to have just enough ability to do it. Um, natural selections are funny. It's not random. It's not random at all. Um, it's not random selection. It is natural selection is, is better term. I love things like evolution. So hopefully this will teach me some more as well. 
A penguin, an ant, and some YouTube guy all walk into a bar. Because we all have legs. <laughs> it's not a very good joke, but if we go back to the common ancestor between me and a penguin, it already had legs, and they were built a lot like mine. We say a similarity like this is homologous, because the trait was inherited from a common ancestor. But the common ancestor between me and an ant was so long ago, it didn't have legs. Our ancestors and ant ancestors evolved legs independently. We call these similarities analogous. Analogous similarities are the result of convergent evolution. One of the most striking examples is in how the wolf and thylacine walk. Think of your own foot. We're plantigrade animals. So plantigrade animals put their whole foot flat on the ground. The ancient ancestors of the Tasmanian wolf were possums, like our neighborhood possums, and they're plantigrade animals like we are. They put their whole foot flat on the ground. When a dog stands or a wolf stands, their heel is up in the air, right? So here's the hip joint, here's the knee joint, there's the heel joint. So what they're standing on is the toes. are their toes. The Tasmanian wolf keeps his heel off the ground and it's walking on its toes like a dog. Despite coming from different ancestors, the wolf and thylacine independently evolved this analogous trait. So it's more about just generally what suited the environment, what suited their bodies. Just, it, it's more of a coincidence that they're the same. I, Makes sense, makes sense. Walking on their toes. I'm never gonna look at my dogs the same way again that they're tiptoeing around the house all the time. <laughs> Another example, take a bird's wing and a bat's wing. Homologous or analogous? This one's a little tougher. So let's see if I can guess what this is. So this, this is a, this is a bat, bat one, right? <laughs> yes, this is a bat. This is one of the larger species of bats. This is a fruit bat. The, it, also, uh, it also says, says, this fruit, also bat. says fruit bat right there. Right. I was cheating. The common ancestor of birds and bats already had a forelimb. So having an arm-like thing is a homologous trait. But using that arm-like thing as a wing evolved independently in birds and bats. So flying with arm-like things is an analogous trait. Birds flap their whole arm, but bats fly in a totally different way. The uh, scientific name for the group that bats belong to is Chiroptera, um, which means hand wing. Its uh, wing is formed by its, its hand. Hat. I recognize this, like you look it's at any x-ray of your arm, that. those are, that's the same, like one bone, two bones. Right. Does that mean that's a thumb? This is a thumb. So, a similarity inherited from a common ancestor, homologous. Similarity not from a common ancestor, analogous. Let's run down some examples. The human inner ear and a Dimetrodon's jaw joint are homologous. Our distant shared ancestor had the same structure. Platypus and duckbills, analogous. Their shared ancestor didn't have it. A bird's feather and a reptile's scales. Different today, but both are inherited from a common ancestor, so they're homologous. And the wolf-like body of the thylacine now we know the answer. It's analogous. analogous. It formed independently by convergent evolution. The key to convergent evolution is a similar environment. Conditions like the climate, competition, and what foods around determine which traits are favored more than others. In the open ocean, a streamlined body and a powerful swimming tail, it's proven to work. And so we see it in all kinds of animals. Underground, a legless body seems to work pretty well. For medium-sized carnivorous mammals that have to run after their prey, a dog-like body works really well. So we see it again and again and again. And these are all just examples of similar body shapes and anatomy, but behaviors can be convergent too. Just ask a bat and a dolphin. They both, what, use sonar? That type of, that type of uh, communication, but they're clearly not the same animals, are they? <sighs> if you speak bat or dolphin. <laughs> oh, don't. Don't do that. None of these are best. There's no such thing as perfect traits. Having a streamlined body is not the only way to be successful in the ocean. Just ask an octopus. And having a dog-like body is not the only way to be a successful hunter. Just ask a bear. But even though evolution doesn't march towards some ideal form, I've got to say, thylacines are particularly awesome. They show us an important lesson. Not all similarities are the same. Stay curious. I want to say a big thank you to Rob. This is awesome. Thanks for introducing us to one of the coolest, weirdest animals I've ever seen. Uh, favorite, favorite marsupial? Favorite marsupial.
Mine too. <laughs> wow, quick to pick a favorite marsupial, aren't we, Joe? <laughs> what, Gosh. should I pick kangaroos that I saw? <laughs> I like wallabies, they're cute. Okay. Yeah, wallabies are cute. I think wallabies are cuter than kangaroos. But then wallaroos are even cuter than wallabies, so. And, and, and thank you to Vanessa for helping. Can we see the pelt? Um, uh, well, <laughs> That's what I want to see. Uh, yeah, well, there it is, right there. There's the folds. Right there. Oh. Okay. Okay. It's like you guys are doing car work. <laughs> Check out the brakes. Of a different kind. <laughs> I do want to actually see myself. Hey guys, myself. thanks for watching this week's video. Okay, I'm not going to say it. Let's have that angle. That's quite funny. Um, wow. Did, did everyone watching this, for starters, know that the thylacine was a marsupial? And the fact that it actually uh, is more related to things like kangaroos than a dog or a wolf, even though it looks so much more like a dog or a wolf, is, is fascinating. And it's basically the environment, the climate, you know, it's, it's what it evolved in a way to suit the environment around it and, and, and the hunting techniques it needed to do to feed. Ah, oh, it's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. And what a brilliant video that not everything, just because they look the same, doesn't mean they are the same, doesn't mean they came from the same tree. Fantastic. Interesting as anything. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you like and subscribe for plenty more informational videos like this. I'll catch you next time.